there are a lot of solids that can be described as a rotation of a region in the 2D plane. So let me draw a region as an example, such as this. And we take an axis, and this axis will be horizontal, let's say. And the solid can be described as the rotation or the revolution of this region around the axis, like so. So what would that look like? Well, we'd have another copy of the region on the other side that looks just like it. So pretend this is an exact copy of this region above it. And so we see we would have some, in this case, it would look sort of like a hollowed out object. So there's a very rough picture. Uh, what I want to point out is that if we want to know what the volume of this object is, we can use the formula that the volume of a solid is the definite integral of its cross-sectional areas. So in this picture, the A and the B would represent the leftmost X value. Here's X is A, and the rightmost X value from the, you get to look at the original cross-section, sorry, not cross-section, the original two-dimensional region here. And this X value here, where it ends, would be X is equal to B. It looks like it goes out further, but that's just a perspective trick playing with us here. So we'd be going from X is A to X is B, so there's my A and my B, and we need to know what the area cross-sections look like. And if it's a solid of revolution, we can always represent these area cross-sections as, uh, if the region's sufficiently nice, we can represent them as washers. So what does that look like? Well, what we'll do is we'll take a vertical line segment of this region. I'll also draw it down here on the bottom. And just look at what happens if I rotate that vertical line segment. What you end up with is a circle with another circle cut out of it. So I'm going to take this and I'll draw this looking at it from the side now. So here's that washer turned on its side. And the axis that it revolved around, that's represented here at this point at the very center. So we're taking this axis here, now it's pointing directly at us from the middle of this washer. And so what we want to know is we really want to know the area of that guy. Well, that's easy. It's the area of a circle, pi, I'll call it big R of x squared, minus pi little r of x squared. It's the big circle minus the little circle. Now in this picture here, the little radius is this distance here. In the picture, here's the little radius right here. It's from the axis up to the bottom of the original region. So this picture's getting messier and messier, but let's try and remember that this is the original thing that we were talking about. Here's that original region right there that got rotated around. That's the little radius. The big radius would be from the axis up to the outermost circle. So that'd be this point up to the top of that region. So uh, one thing we could do is we can simplify this a little bit. Maybe we could factor out that pi. So we get pi big radius squared minus little radius squared. And the last thing to remember is that, yeah, these are functions of x because they're going to depend on 
this chosen x value that we took here in the middle of the region. All right, now I can take this and I can plug it back in to the formula, and this gets us the formula for what we call the washer method. Because this thing is here, we call this a washer. This is the formula for the washer method. And I go from A to B. We can pull out this pi here to the side, and we'll get big R squared minus little r squared dx. All right, so here's our washer method. And that's the formula that we're going to use uh, to solve problems about finding volumes of solids of revolution. Let's take a look at an example problem. Okay, so let's see how we would do this. Um, let's start by drawing. And when we do these drawings, we really want to concentrate on the two-dimensional drawing. That's actually all that's going to matter. So I'll start by drawing this triangle with those vertices. So I've got 0, 0, uh, 2, 2. and 2, 4. So here's my triangle, and it's being rotated around the x-axis. So it's important that we draw the two-dimensional region as well as drawing the axis of revolution. Okay, the other important thing that we need to be able to draw is an x value in the middle here. So let me draw this. Uh, I'll do this in, uh, I did it in light blue earlier, so I'll do it in light blue again. So I'll pick some value in the middle. Maybe it could be exactly in the middle or it could be off a little bit. And I'm going to call that x. And the washer is what we get if we take this vertical line segment and rotate it around. I'll try and draw that a little bit cleaner. So there's the washer. However, as we just saw when I was giving you the formula, uh, that gets a little bit messy. So honestly, I just leave it off. Instead, what I do is I identify two things, two, two measurements is what I need here. I need to know what the little radius is. And I can see that. I can squeeze that in right here. That's the little radius. I also need to be able to know what the big radius is. So the little radius is the distance from the center, the axis, to the bottom here. The big radius is the distance to the top. So there's my little radius and my big radius. Again, you can see that that makes sense if you actually draw the washer. Take this vertical line segment here, draw its buddy down here at the bottom, and then draw the circle. So you can see there's a little radius, there's the big radius. But I usually don't actually draw those because it just gets so messy. Okay, well, that's all well and good, but um, how do I figure out what little r and big R actually are? So for this problem, I'll start with the little radius here. I notice that the little radius comes from the bottom curve. And so what I could do is I could take this point right here, and the x value of this point is x, the y value of this point comes from the equation of this curve. So I'm looking for the y value, because that's the distance from the axis up to this point here, is the y value. And on this curve, well, what is it? It's a straight line from 0, 0 to 2, 2. That's the line y is equal to x. Uh, so there it is. That's just r of x is equal to x. Again, that was the line y equals x that this came from. For the big radius, it's the distance from the axis up to the top curve. Okay, so I'm looking for a different y value from a different curve. This is the line, well, let's see, we're going over 2 and up 4. That has a slope of 2. That's y is equal to 2x. All right, so here we have it. R of x equals 2x. 
little r of x is equal to x. So now I'm going to use my washer method formula. which says volume is a to b with a pi on the outside, big R squared minus little r squared. Okay. Oh, I never did figure out what my little a and my big A are, right? Well, that's not too hard because all I have to do is look at the leftmost point of the region. That's x is equal to 0. The rightmost points of the region are where x is equal to 2. So I'll be from 0 to 2. OK, my big R is 2x, we just see over here. So that's going to be 2x all squared minus my little r, is just plain old x squared. And I don't want to forget my dx. All right, pi, 0 to 2. That's 4x squared minus x squared. That's 3x squared. That integrates to x cubed from 0 to 2. So I've got 8 pi minus 0 pi. 8 pi. So that's the answer. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised that we end up getting a pi in the answer, of course. Uh, it always will pop up because we're doing the washer method, because we're doing revolutions. We're doing things with, uh, that deal with circles or washers. And uh, if you want, you can kind of go back to the original picture and see that actually what we have here is a cone with another cone on the inside cut out of it. So, uh, again, drawing that 3D picture doesn't help you solve it, but at least it gives you an idea of what you're actually doing. You're finding the volume of a big cone with a little cone cut out of it. And if you're familiar with the volume of a cone formula, you could actually compute this just by taking the volume of the big cone and subtracting away the volume of the little cone. Uh, we won't do that right now, though. Let's do another example instead. So now we're going to take, uh, this is a little bit different. We'll have a cone involved because it'll be a more curved region. So let's see what that would look like. So we're going to take the line y is equal to x. So it looks like that. And we'll also take the line y is equal to x squared, which starts out below, and then it goes up. And there's the same thing on the other side here. So that's my uh, really sketchy picture. Um, so first things first, I just need to figure out what this region even looks like. Forget the axis for just a moment. Uh, I just need to know what, what I'm actually revolving. Um, OK, so let's. I've done this problem before. I know where these things cross, but uh, you know, let's suppose it was something more even if, if it was more complicated. You know, I may not know that. Um, it looks like it might be zero, zero, and one, one. But how do we actually know? Okay. Well, what I can do is I can take these two equations and set them equal to each other. We want to know where the x uh, and the y values are the same. So we're going to set these y values equal to each other. X squared equals x squared. All right. So x squared equals sorry, x equals x squared, and then I can solve for 0 and factor out an x. And uh, there we have it. We've got x is equal to 0 is a solution, x is equal to 1 is a solution. There's my 0, there's my 1. The corresponding y values I get by just plugging in to the formulas, uh, but of course here, y is equal to x, it's obvious, so that's going to be 0 and 1. Okay, we can already see that this has gotten really messy, so what I will do then is I'll redraw the picture with just the information I care about. So, I need the points 0, 0, and 1, 1. All right. 
And the picture doesn't have to be perfect. I just have to know that I have the straight line on top, the curvy business on the bottom. Okay, so there's my region. I know that my A is going to be 0, my B is going to be 1. Now, the axis, Y is equal to 2 here. I need to draw that as well. So I'll go up here, 1, 2. And here is my axis. All right. So what does my uh, washer look like? Well, the washer looks like I'm going to take... A vertical line here and if I were to actually draw the washer I'd have another vertical line up here and I would draw two circles and there's a side view of my washer but all that really matters is the vertical line all right now I need to identify the inside radius that's going to be the distance from the axis to this point so here's my inside radius little r of y and my outside radius the distance to the outside point from the axis okay well this is all well and good but um, this it's, it's a lot more tricky now because these distances are not determined by y values of points anymore. It's because the y value of a point tells you the distance from the x-axis. Here our axis was y is equal to 2. So uh, it's no longer just as simple as, well, what's the formula for that curve? So here's what I do in order to figure these problems out. I'm going to add a little bit more label labeling here. Um, let's see here. I'll throw this here. The distance from this point to this point I could draw right here and that would be given by the lower curve what is that lower curve it's curvy so it's not at y equals x the line it's y equals x squared the parabola so this vertical value which is a y value from here to here to this point that's y equals x squared well what does that help me with uh, well what it helps me with is the fact that I know that the distance from the x-axis to the axis of revolution, that's y is equal to 2, that distance is 2. Okay? Oh, I apologize. These are not r of y. This is r of x. r of x. I miswrote that. So we are looking for functions of x because we are picking an x value here in the middle. So now that I have this r of x, I have this y equals x squared and 2. How do I put all this together? Well, I just do some adding of distances. I have the little distance, y equals x squared, plus I have this bigger distance, r of x, big r of x, equals the entire distance here of 2. So my big r of x is 2 minus x squared. All right, I'm going to do a similar thing here for the little r of x. I'm going to identify the distance from the x-axis to the top curve. All right, this top curve here, that distance here would be given by the top curve, y equals x. And then I can put it all together because I still have the distance from the x-axis up to the axis of revolution here is still 2. So for this left stuff, I have y equals x plus the remainder of the distance, little r of x, equals 2. And I'll solve for little, I'll solve for little r of x to get 2 minus x. This is always the hardest part of these problems, is finding your big R and your little r. Uh, but now that we've done that, the rest is easy. We plug into the formula, a to b, 0 to 1, pi on the outside, big R, 2 minus x squared, squared, minus little r, 2 minus x squared, dx. Put the big R here, minus the little r. 
pi is from 0 to 1. Uh, I've got 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth minus 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Uh, 4 and the minus the 4 cancels with each other. Uh, I've got negative 4x squared minus x squared, so I'm getting 5x squared, sorry, negative 5x squared plus x to the fourth minus a negative 4x. And that's not an order, but it doesn't matter. We're going to integrate and plug in negative 5 thirds x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth plus 2x squared from 0 to 1. We get negative 5 thirds plus 1 fifth plus 2 minus zip. All right, common denominator, uh, I've got negative 15 over, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, negative 25 over 15 plus uh, 3 over 15 plus 30 over 15 times pi. So I got 30 minus 25 is 5 plus 3 is 8. Final answer is 8 pi over 15.